Walking through Leicester today, it is often hard to imagine that we are treading on over 2,000 years of history. But with over 80 years of excavations, Leicester today is one of the most excavated cities in Britain, giving us exceptional access to our past. I'm Matthew Morris, I'm an archaeologist from the University of Leicester, and in this series I'm going to use the latest archaeological research to explore what life was like in Roman Leicester. In this film, we will take a closer look at two Roman curse tablets found in Leicester. In the Roman world, one way to avenge a personal slight or to get redress for a petty crime was to seek divine punishment for the wrongdoer. This was done by writing a message to a god or gods on a metal tablet and then placing it in a sacred or meaningful place, or hiding it in a building. Over 200 of these tablets have been found in Britain most coming from the Sacred Spring at Bath in Somerset. In 2006, archaeologists from the University of Leicester also found two tablets in Leicester during excavations for the High Cross Shopping Centre. These are the first ever found in the city. Both were written on thin sheets of lead. And they were found in dumps of building rubble from a large Roman courtyard house, which was demolished in the 4th century AD. Both were skillfully written in Latin sometime in the late 2nd or early 3rd century AD, either by the plaintiffs or scribes on their behalf. The Sabinianus tablet, named after its author, tells a story of theft. Those who have stolen the silver coins of Sabinianus, that is, Similus, Cupidus, Lecita, a god will strike down in this Septazonium, and I ask that they lose their life before seven days. The Septazonium is an enigmatic structure, probably a monumental public fountain dedicated to the seven planetary deities who gave their names to the days of the week, the Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn and the Sun, and the curse tablet was probably written to be thrown in the water. This is only the sixth known reference to such a building in the Roman Empire, and the only example from Northern Europe. The other known sites are in North Africa, Sicily and Rome itself. They are all linked with Septimus Severus, the Roman Empire's first North African emperor, depicted here with his family. Could he be responsible for the building in Leicester? We can't say for sure, but we do know he stayed in Britain for four years at the beginning of the 3rd century AD, so it is possible that he visited Leicester. The second curse tablet, called the Savandus tablet, also tells the story of a petty theft, this time of a cloak from a slave's quarters. I give to the god Maglus him who did wrong from the slave quarters. I give him who did theft from the slave quarters, who stole the cloak of Savandus. Sylvester, Rigamandus, Senilus, Venustinus, Vorvenna, Calaminus, Felicianus, Rufedo, Vendicinia, Ingenuinus, Juventius, Alocus, Senosus, Germanus, Senado, Cunavendus, Regalis, Nigella, Senicianus. I give that the god Maglus, before the ninth day, take away him who stole the cloak of Savandus. The tablet had damage from a nail and had plaster still sticking to it, suggesting it was originally fixed to the wall of a building, possibly in the slave quarters itself. Savandus calls on the god Maglus to punish the thief. This is the only known reference to such a god, and the name probably comes from the Celtic word for prince. It is interesting to see that Britain's indigenous deities were still actively being called upon over a hundred years after the Roman conquest of the island. Savandus clearly had no idea who stole his cloak, for he lists 20 suspects. This is the single largest group of Roman names ever recorded in Leicester. The names are a mixture of Latin, Celtic and Greek, and include 17 men and 3 women. Given that the cloak was stolen from a slave quarters, this list must be a unique roll call of household slaves, probably from the courtyard house where the tablet was discovered. Curiously, the last name on Savandus' list, Senecianus, is scratched out. Is this because Senecianus managed to prove his innocence? Or is it because he was guilty and his name has been deleted in a symbolic act of obliteration? Sadly, we will never know. These tablets give a rare insight into the lives of people living in the Roman town 1,800 years ago. 
ordinary people, especially slaves, who usually remain voiceless in the archaeological record. Their problems are the same as ours today, and this familiarity gives us a tangible connection with our past. If you have enjoyed watching this film, please visit our website for further information on life in Roman Leicester.